Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm taking a look at Illuminar Neo version 1.1. That's right, another update. It's out today. You can get Illuminar at the link down below if you haven't yet purchased it. And if you're a current customer of Illuminar Neo, this is a free update. It includes portrait background removal, which is the last big feature that we've been waiting for. So the product is now considered feature complete. They've got everything in it in this version 1.1 that they told us they were going to have. So for those of you that have asked, you know, hey Jim, is the product, does it have everything in it? It does. Now I'm going to walk through portrait background removal, show you how it works. This is a stock photo and I'm going to go into layer properties. If you look on the left hand side, you can see layers. You don't go click on a plus to add a layer or anything like that. You go to layer properties, click on masking, and you will see there's portrait background. I'm gonna give that one click. It's AI based masking. It'll identify the subject and create a mask for it. Here we go. Hey Jim, where's the mask? Well, first click on remove to remove the background and the background is removed. And you can even see some of these fine hairs have been captured. Pretty sweet stuff. But there's a refinements brush as well. So if you need to refine the edges, you can do that. And there's basically three things to be aware of here. And I, yes, I'm going to walk through them. Um, size, of course, is the size of your mouse, right? You can also do that with the bracket key. Now, there's three sections, transition, object, and background. I'll do these in order. Transition, as the name implies, is the transition zone, basically the edge. What you're helping Neo identify as the edge of your subject, which is going to be Hey, I want to keep this subject. Hey, I want to remove the background. Where is the edge? So if for some reason it did not capture that, you can go in and adjust that. The object, if you click on object, is as the name uh, implies, of course, the subject is kind of the way I think about it. Think about this. That tab is orange. Your subject is orange. And I think they call it object because object starts with O, orange starts with O. So just remember that. And the tab starts with it. So all you got to do is come in here and you can just paint with your mouse on top of anything that you consider the object or the subject. And then if you let go of your mouse, it's going to fill that in. You can see what's happened there. So sometimes I will come in and basically just give Neo a little bit more information. I'll just come along these edges and say, hey, Neo, all of this is my object that I want to mask. And then again, let go of the mouse and it will fill in that for you. Now you don't necessarily have to do this. And of course, adjust your mouse size accordingly. But I'm going to come in and just paint a little bit more along this person's hair and that sort of thing, just so it'll fill in and have more information. You give it a second and there it is. Now the last section is background. And hey, the background is blue. Background starts with B, blue starts with B. And of course, this tab is blue. So again, I might just come in and give Neo a little bit more information and say, hey, all this area that's kind of in that gray checkered pattern, which is the transitional zone, that's not really necessarily a transitional zone. That's more background. So again, I might just come in, give it some more information. Just be careful here. It's picked up those fine hairs, and I want to make sure that I don't overdo that or write over it with the blue. So I'm just going to come in, do something like that. Let's just say that that's all done, and now I've got my mask in place. So you can just close layer properties, and this is where you go add your new background, which is over here at left-hand side. Click on the plus to add a new layer. I will just uh, stick her on this landscape. If you don't have an image already loaded, you can click on load image. You can see the aspect ratio is not perfectly aligned, so you can just drag the edges here in order to fit your new background on the photo. And you can see that they're kind of halfway blended, and that's because the opacity defaults to 50. Um, I recommend just going to 100. Hey Jim, I can't see her anymore. Well, that's true because I've basically got this image which is my background, but it comes in on top because that's how you add a new layer. So just close that and you come over here and you can just click and drag her on top of that. And there you go. You've got her including some of these fine hairs on top of that landscape photo. Now, there's a couple things to think about when you're doing this, which is, does it even make sense for her to be standing here in front of this landscape? Not necessarily. Um, that's one thing. But perhaps more importantly is, does the light match? It's kind of like when you do a sky replacement. Hey, did you put a completely brightly lit foreground like it was shot in the middle of the day with a stormy 
night sky or with a sunset. You want to make sure that the light and that sort of thing go together. This isn't necessarily a perfect implementation of that, just a demo, but I wanted to point that out. There are things to think about. So experiment and that sort of thing. Also, you might notice around the edges, you might need to do some refinement there. But I wanted to point out how it works and I want to give you another example. Okay, this one, because the hair is kind of everywhere, I wanted to show you how this will work. Masking and portrait background. Again, AI based, just like a, uh, AI masking that we got in the last update. This will come in and I'm gonna go ahead and click on remove and let's see what it does here with all this hair kind of being everywhere. See, the background didn't get fully picked up. So that's where the refinement brush comes in. You can take a look at your mask. I would go in here to transition and I would just say, hey, this is all a transition because there's no way I'm gonna individually mask these hairs and it didn't pick it up automatically. Over here by her ear, it didn't do that either. And that's okay, that's what the refinement brush is for. And that's why I'm showing you this example. So just come in and do that sort of thing. And then if you want, get some more object. I'm gonna shrink my mouse. I'm gonna come in and say, hey, this is all object. And I'm doing kind of a rough job here. I recommend that you take your time, but I wanted to point out how this transition stuff can be affected. And then if you want to come in and adjust the background, you can do that as well. Again, it's just a situation of where you're giving Luminar more information, which I think is always good, right? You could even come up in here and do something like that just to really let it know that, hey, that's more you know, background. Anyway, come in, do whatever you need to do, click on layer properties to close that, and you've got a better mask. I went kind of fast, I recommend going a little bit slower, but again, you can come in, add a layer, and in this case, maybe I'll add one of these flares that's built in, and you can see the mask is not perfect around those hairs, but drag the opacity up and drag her on top. She's in place, again, Experiment, go slow, be careful with these fine hairs and use the masking tool to refine it as much as possible and think about the light on your subject versus the light in terms of how the background looks. Now I wanna show you one more example. This is a photo that I took and edited. I'll click on layer properties, I will click on masking and click on portrait background. Just like Mask AI, it's going in and doing the calculation, figuring out the mask and letting you know, okay, it's now identified it. As you can see, that's pretty quick. I'm gonna go ahead and click remove to take the background away, and there I am. If I want to refine it, as soon as I click on refine, you can see what it's done. I don't really feel like I need to do anything here. I mean, I could come in and maybe fill in a little bit on some of these spots, uh, but I don't really think that Luminar is having any problems. But you notice down here, there is a spot where it didn't really figure out that that's her dress. I think it's because it's got white stripes on it and maybe that feels or looks a little bit like a background. So it marked it as a transition. Regardless, quick and easy, just come in and do whatever you need to do to apply or uh, refine your mask. And then click on layer properties when you're done. I think I've got a pretty good mask there. Again, this is automatic. So it's doing it for me. I'm spending, uh, well not zero time, but I'm spending a few seconds on it. And I'm gonna click on this, and let's say I wanna add this background image of mine that I took in Boston years ago. Different aspect ratio, so actually the buildings are gonna look a little misshapen perhaps. I just wanna stick her on top of a cityscape. I'm gonna adjust my opacity, and then I'm just gonna come in here and drag her on top, close my layer properties, and there you go. So that's how it works. Again, take your time, refine the edges. You can see here uh, a little bit of refinement needs to be done around the hairs. But I mean, if you zoom in, you can see it's done a pretty good job really of picking up these fine hairs. And even in here, I mean, it's, uh, it's blended in pretty well. I think down here, it's a little bit of a challenge partly because of the light difference on the original background and the new background. So something to think about, but that's portrait background removal, my friends. It's cool, it's here, we've been waiting for it. I'm loving it, I'm having a lot of fun. I do wanna point out I'm recording this video in advance, so it's still a beta version of this feature, which means at launch, when you see this video, things could be slightly different. I wanted to point that out. But that's the basics of how it works. I'll be back soon to talk about it in a little bit more depth and show some more examples. Thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you found this helpful. Once again, Illuminar Neo is now feature complete. It's got everything in it that we were told um, it was gonna have. So I'm pretty excited about that. Hope you're excited about it. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll catch you guys in the next video. You guys take care. Thanks for hanging out, and until next time, adios.